Hi! I know it's been a while, so I'm so excited to come back and do January for your sign. Um, where I've been, I will, when I have some time, make a longer, more intensive video about that, if you care. But I think most of you just kind of want to know what's going on for my January. So this video is going to be a little bit longer. I had out my pendulum. I had out, like, seven or eight different decks of cards. I had out, like, even some, like, astrology dice. Um, so there's a lot in this video. And I will also uh, put somewhere on my website a little cheat sheet to help you get through the month. It's going to have your lucky days. It's going to have your unlucky days, the general theme. Um, what else does it have in it? Oh, of course your power crystal, your power color. It's going to have affirmations, which chakra you want to focus on this month, how you can spiritually evolve, blah, blah, blah. It's like the all-encompassing January. Like, get you off on the right foot right out the gate for this brand new year. So I'm so excited to do this for you and let's just get into it. I keep forgetting to mention this, but for those of you who um, don't know, if you go to my website, and there's like a link in the description box below, you can sign up to win a free reading every month. And so like you just sign up once and you're automatically in the drawing forever style. And so I just wanted to let you know. Gemini, so what does January look like for you? Okay, so... You've got the moon in reverse, so you already know what it's going to look like, more or less. Um, they're saying with the universe card here, which is similar to the world card in a traditional deck, um, that it's like, okay, endings mean new beginnings, and that's where we're at. 2018 just ended. January is a new year. And that's kind of a theme that I see when I'm looking at all of the things that I kind of pulled out in advance for you guys. So, um... The interesting thing here is with the color energies that I pulled for you, you have blue and black. You have two of them. Um, black says finding the richness from the dark night. So that is like looking at the shadow side of yourself, looking at like, okay, so black is essentially not even a color, right? Like it's the absence of light. So it's like looking at these like negative things from the past and what did we learn from those experiences you know like kind of how every situation is either good for you or it's good like nothing's bad necessarily it can feel like really bad but there's a lesson within it that is good and so it's basically going and looking backwards at that stuff and seeing where we need to grow and where we need to heal because blue is about activating your healing power so for example people use a blue light ray energy for healing to stop bleeding and things like that or to heal pain and so it's like actually going back looking at our pain and trying to heal it is what we're going to do in January these are the colors that we're going to embrace for this okay now um the thing is is that our throat chakra is the one that they had said is your chakra of focus for this month which correlates with the blue so just putting that out there. Um, what the interesting thing here is, is that your focus for the month, your key word is responsibility, that you're aware of your thoughts and the amount of love that you express. So when we're expressing things, that correlates to our throat chakra, especially when we're expressing them verbally. So what are we verbalizing to other people, and therefore, what are we manifesting? And, you know, we tend to perceive things that are black or dark as bad. So if you are projecting out, you know, complaints all of the time, oh, how's your day? Fucking horrible. Um, what do you think you're going to manifest for the next day? 
You know, how do you think you're going to feel the rest of the day if you're living in that negativity? And that's not what I'm saying about this color energy because we do want to embrace the positive side of the dark. We want to be able to look at those things at our shadow side, um, the things that are hidden that we need to heal, like some deep emotional work and stuff. And it's okay to talk about those things, but we are responsible for the way that we decide to feel about them in the aftermath of that, like what kind of attitude we want to adopt, right? Kind of like how I said, you know, things happen to us, but if we can step outside of those and look at those, like, okay, that felt really bad, but it was just a thing that happened. And um, so it's not discrediting how you feel, but it's saying you can choose to see the positive side of it as you move on into 2019. Does that make sense? So that brings us to our affirmation card, which is abundance. And it says, I am a limitless being and I can manifest whatever I desire into physical reality. So this is another reason why we need to be responsible for the things that we're thinking about, for the way that we're framing things, and for the words that we're speaking. Because every thought that we have or everything that we say, it kind of goes out into the universe as a prayer and or like an ask, okay? And the universe is obedient. It doesn't like think things through. It's just, um, it's kind of like if you were to push a button to order, um, you know, a soft drink. And so you're going to order Diet Coke and it brings you a Diet Coke, but there was no way to specify that you want a Diet Coke with lime. It's just going to bring you the Diet Coke, okay? Or caffeine free. It, it's like that's how the universe works. Whatever you put out there, like it doesn't use those qualifiers. It's just obedient and it brings what you say. So this is something we want to think about because we can manifest whatever it is we desire. So let's put our thoughts on. Let's be responsible and think about only the things that we want. And what we do want to do is heal, you know, when those negative things come up. It's not saying, like, completely dissociate and forget that these bad things ever happened. No, but let's focus on our healing now, okay? So that being said, those things might take some time. Um, this is your kind of card or theme of the month, which is Eight of Discs or Eight of Pentacles and other decks. So they're saying intuitively you know that this growth needs to happen, right? For your own happiness. Do you see very closely here that these flowers, these hands are helping these flowers to spot, to, to grow, right? You're helping yourself to bloom, to grow, to manifest because Eight of Discs is about like um, physical, like uh, tangible blessings like money and wealth and things like that. It's about waiting for them to grow and knowing that it's a slower process. The things don't grow overnight. You plant the seeds, right, which are our thoughts, and then you're responsible for tending to those very gently, gently working yourself to this place of healing. Okay, so that's where we're at with that. Um, your lucky days of the month are the 11th. Your not-so-lucky day of the month is the 6th. So I don't know if you gamble or not, but if you do, it wouldn't go on the 6th. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, if you were to take up a spiritual type hobby this month, they say runestones is most aligned with your kind of vibe. So speaking of vibes, I told you that I had used like all sorts of different tools to find out what we needed to know about January, pendulums, um, my astrology dice over here which, by the way, are on my website if you want your own set. I have two different types. Um, so anyway, the vibes that I'm picking up with these here um, are a few. So it's a vibe that's kind of like if Venus were in your fourth house. So this is talking about love, relationships, like your feminine aspects pertaining to like the home and your family. That's kind of the vibe that you're in. And so what do you need to know about that? And they're saying two of pentacles, the Lord of harmonious change. So creating a positive change that is stable, um, putting maybe a little bit of money into the house, not tons of it, but a little bit, like rearranging your furniture and maybe buying new curtains or just putting flowers in the kitchen is going to create greater harmony in your relationships and in your home in general. Then they throw these out of the deck and they say... Um, not everybody has had the same goal at home. 
Um, and so you might feel like you are giving or over giving to the people who live there, right? But maybe that's your job. Maybe you're a mother, maybe you're a wife, and that's just how it goes. Because they're saying like, there's a lot of joy in that. Like the more you give, even though you might not be receiving back like immediately, it does create a more harmonious home environment. And so even if you live by yourself, it's like the more energy you give to creating a beautiful home, the more positive juju, like the more positive good vibes you're going to feel in other aspects of your life like you're more easily able to relax or to even think straight if your house is decluttered and so um they're saying this is kind of the key to your material success which is somewhat of a subtle focus here based on the fact that we're using our affirmations to attract abundance and we're saying okay not only are we growing ourselves but we are trying to bring in these blessings you know, of abundance, both financially, but like in other aspects, um, this month in January for Gemini's. So um, the other thing here is the other vibe I got is kind of like a Uranus and Jupiter, both in, you know, the eighth house of like loss and change and also sometimes sex. So what does this mean? So Uranus is like, Big changes are happening, like revolutions and like awakening. So if that happens, like in relation to your sex life, awesome. You might have just discovered something really cool in January you didn't even know you were into. Um, But if it's coming in regards to this like kind of loss and change energy, which for the majority of you, that's probably what it is when we have like this black, like looking at the shadow self. Okay, why does this hurt so much? Like what kind of past traumas and stuff are like activating me to feel like extra super emotional about this shit that I'm having to let go and how do I heal from it? There's that. And then the other side of it was like the Jupiter, like things expanding. And it's also, Jupiter's also about luck. So when we're talking about loss and change, we all, and, um, things expanding but maybe being lucky, this is why it's so important to be responsible with our thinking, with the way that we're framing things. Can we frame things in a healthier way than we used to? Because you know what? This is a month where we are going to be abundant. Do we want to be abundant in bad vibes and negative thinking or do we want to be abundant in like love and joy and happiness and fucking money? Because that's what it's saying. So, excuse my language. Um. Anyway, so... Then we also have this aspect here, um, per the dice, that talks about um, north node sort of like in a second house vibe, and this is where it really is starting to talk about money and possessions and things like that because that is the second house. So what it's saying is that all of a sudden, we've got to start thinking about what is our life mission, number one, Um, what are our goals, number two, and like kind of facing the fact that these are going to be uncomfortable and challenging, like, and it's supposed to be. Like, our life mission isn't something we just show up and we're like, boom, it was easy, bye. No, that's more of our South Node stuff. Like, that's like our inherent ability. But it's like your mission has to be hard. It's supposed to be challenging, right? And it's supposed to make a difference. Like, without, what is that thing? they say like um like basically you don't appreciate things that you don't work hard for like if something is given to you too easily like you don't give a crap about it you don't care right like you can't take pride in it and so your life mission you want to be able to take pride in it that's basically what they're saying here so how are we supposed to achieve that um and you know it's saying it's going to be hard but this should help us out with our money and our possessions, but it is going to be a challenge. Now, what it's saying is maybe starting a new career path, maybe starting a new job. Maybe you want to launch your own business, something that's more in alignment to like with what you think your mission is. Um, You know, you might have to be creative that way. Maybe you really feel a connection to pandas but you live in the United States and you're like how am I gonna save the pandas that's my life mission um maybe you have to make a move maybe you have to go to where the pandas are you can't just hang out at the San Diego Zoo all day um so I mean maybe you could if you work there maybe that's where you want to go work so you're saying anyway the challenge here for you is to figure out What is it that you're actually hoping for? And like, even if you don't know what you're hoping for, what is it that the universe thinks that you're hoping for? Because you're definitely putting some messages out there and you are responsible for the messages you put out. 
So they're saying Queen of Wands energy here. Okay, and in this deck, um, it's called the Queen of the Throne of Flames. Your passion, your desire, what like lights you up, what gets you excited. If you don't know, maybe that's part of the challenge, okay? Maybe the challenge is figuring out what it is you're passionate about because you're so concerned about money and possessions, like just getting paycheck to paycheck, having enough to survive, that you're not even thinking about what it is that you desire. But the thing is, is when you're in that flow spiritually, when you're focused on the things that you are passionate about, your life mission, the money comes easy. It just is going to flow to you because you're in the right vibe. Now, um, some people don't know this, but your life mission is not always your job. Your purpose might not be your job. Some of us is just to be a good friend. So even if we have a boring ass mundane job, if we are living that purpose, if we're being like the best friend we can be to the people that we know, then money is just going to flow to us easy. We're going to get promotions at work that like we feel like we didn't even earn. Okay. So you have to feel really confident that you're taking steps in the direction of what you perceive to be your life purpose. If you don't know what your life purpose is, um, maybe a private reading would help and I can help you discern that. But anyway, that that's kind of the theme for January for you. Now, these guys that fell on the floor here, they're saying it's hard to get excited about things when we have these fears about our money and our possession. And then they say it's also really, really hard for us with um, our past experiences where we weren't successful. Maybe you got some uh, really excited about something in the past and you thought it was going to be successful and then it wasn't and then now you have this fear which is blocking that flow of abundance. But this time is different is essentially is what they're saying. They're saying so go ahead and make that leap, take that jump. Um, because you won't be disappointed if you're able to heal those past experiences that didn't work out for you. And that's why we keep talking about, you know, this blue light energy of healing. And so how do you use these color energies? Well, you can wear these colors. You can surround yourself, like imagine yourself like in these, um, surrounded by col these colors of light. Um, lots of different ways you can use it. So anyway, that brings us to our crystal of the month, which is Zebra Jasper. And I only happen to have the brown ones here um, in my hand, but here in general in my home. <laughs> in case you want to buy one from me, I only have brown, uh, not the black and white ones. But the black and white ones will also work. So what is Zebra Jasper used for? Um, essentially, it's going to balance out your chakras, especially your root chakra. And the root chakra is important because it's like the Maslow's Pyramid, right? So it's kind of like we need to have a strong base before we get to like this top uh, third eye and crown chakra. Otherwise, they're not going to be fully illuminated and work the right way for us. Um this is going to absorb negative energy. And so this is why we're working with that black light. Like we are going to dissolve all of this like shitty conditioning and like belief system that we built up in our mind about our past that inhibits us from this abundance flow that we're trying to welcome in in 2019. So this is really good for self-reflection. It's really good for... Um, being like honest with yourself and we all know that blue is the color of communication and honesty and truth it gives you courage it gives you strengths um it helps you to turn your dreams into reality there's a lot more shit that this stuff do does i was gonna say do's that's weird um that this does that correlates to your reading here and so um that's all on the website as well if you go click on the zebra jasper you'll be able to see um what this is, sorry about that distraction there, what what these will do for you. So anyway, um, I hope you have the best January ever, and I'll see you again in February. Bye! Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!